Hello again and welcome to the second example of Codility lesson number 8, the Equileader. Now before we start describing our problem, it's good to know that this one is some continuation of the previous example entitled Dominator. So if you haven't already watched or solved the previous example of lesson 8, I would strongly advise you to do so as the solution will contain parts from that exercise. So here we are given an array of integers and the leader of this array is the value that occurs in more than half of the elements. This is the way it is described on the Codility website. So for those who have already solved the first exercise of lesson eight, what we are calling leader here was previously called dominator. So these are basically the same thing. Now an equileader is an index that would split the array into two parts with the same leader values on the left and the right part of the array. So for example, if we consider we are splitting this array at this point, we have the left part and the right part of the array. And we can see that both these parts have the same leader, which is the number four on the left and also on the right because the number of occurrences of this number four is greater than half of these elements. We have three elements here and we have two number fours. So number four is the leader or the dominator of this part. And it's the same on the right side here. It's also the same number that is the dominator of this right part here. Therefore, this position is called an equileader. And we are talking about the index more precisely because the definition of an equileader on the Codility website is the index that would split the array in such a way. So here the number two or the index number two is the first equileader that we have just found in this example, simply because we are splitting the array into two parts and these have the same equileader, which is number four. Notice that uh, as per the definition of the problem, the uh, index of splitting the position of splitting the array is considered with the left part. So if we say I'm splitting the array with index number two or at position of the index number two, it means that this element or the value pointed by this index will be considered with the left part of the array. Just an edge case to keep in mind while we are solving our problem. Now, if we move the splitting position, we can notice that the left part and the right part have also the same value of leaders. And therefore this new position is also an equileader. And that would be the index number zero in this case. So as a conclusion, you can see that we can find different equileaders in the same array. And the solution here is to return the total number of equileaders. Okay, now I'm not gonna go through the brute solution approach. If you were following my previous videos, you would know that there is always a brute method that would give you the correct results. However, from the performance point, it wouldn't pass the test. So we are going to present uh, the correct and efficient algorithm. We will proceed with the following. First, we have to find the leader or the dominator of the array. And this we have seen how to do in the previous exercise of lesson number eight. Then we are going to count the total occurrences of the leader in the array. And after that, we can loop over the array with a variable that is the counter of the leader occurrences. This way we can have access to the number of leaders on both sides of the array, the left side and the right side, separated by the current index position during our iteration process. So for example, the total number of occurrences of the number four in this array, which is the dominator, is n, which is equal to four. And then we have the counter of occurrences, depending on where we are during our iteration process. At this position, we have one occurrence, which is the first one. Then at this position, we also have seen only one occurrence of number four. Then at this point, we have two already, this one and the previous one, and so on. So this is a counter that is going to be incremented each time we encounter a dominator or leader value. So now that we are looping and we have all these elements here, we can guess the number of occurrences of the uh, dominator on the left side and on the right side of the array at any moment during iterations. For example, if we take this iteration here, the first one, we are splitting the array in this way. We can access the number of occurrences of uh, the dominator on the left and the right by simply counting the uh, variable C, which is the left side occurrences. And then N minus C, four minus one, will provide us with the number of occurrences on the right side. So at any moment, during our iteration process, we have access 
to both values, the occurrences on the left side and on the right side of the array, as we are seeing here in this example. And since we have access to all of these variables during the iteration process, so our solution formula is this one, carrying two conditions. First, we are going to test if i plus one over two is less than c, the number of so far encountered occurrences or the number of occurrences in the left side of uh, the array. The reason we didn't write i plus one over two is less than c, or the number of occurrences is, uh, is greater than half of the size of the slice of the array is because we are working with integers and sometimes when you divide integers by two you lose some precision on your numbers and you might get wrong results. So uh, this is better written this way and this means basically that we have a dominator value on the left side of the array. At the same time we need the same dominator value on the right side of the array and this is why we have a second condition here. We are going to check if the size of the array, the whole array, minus i plus 1, the number of elements of the left side. So this will give us the number of elements on the right side of the split. If it's lower than twice the number of occurrences of the dominator on the right side, which is the total number of occurrences, n, which is equal to 4 in this example, minus c, the occurrences on the left side of the array. So all of this will provide us the number of occurrences on the right side of the uh, slice of the array. So if twice this value is greater than the number of elements, then we have a leader on the right side also, or a dominator. And if we have those two, we have one on the left and a dominator on the right. In this case, we have an equileader position and we can increment the number or the counter of equileaders. Now there is an extremely important remark to keep in mind for the solution. As you may have noticed, we are always looking for the dominator or the leader of the complete array, meaning here the number four. We are not considering that any other number might be the leader when we are cutting the array into slices. In fact, it couldn't be a different number. And the demonstration for this is out of the scope of this video. It's just important to keep in mind that since the dominator occurs in more than half of the array's elements, then it is the only candidate to be also the dominator of smaller slices of that same array. And now we can go and write all of this in C++ and in Python. So this is our solution function in C++. It takes one parameter, which is the array. And the first part of our solution is to find the dominator or the leader of the whole array. This part here is nothing but the same solution that we have applied for the previous example of lesson number eight, which is entitled dominator. And this is where we are going to find the value of the dominator of the array. And we are going to store it in the variable L for leader, this integer that we have defined right here. So the way we are doing this is that first we are going to define a new vector B, which is equal to A. And then we are going to sort B in increasing order. The reason we are defining a new vector is that we would like to keep A intact without modifying the indexing of its elements. Then we are going to define three variables, C, which is equal to one, it's a counter of occurrences. Then L, this is where we are going to store our leader value, and N, which is equal to zero at this point, but we are going to use it later on to count the total number of occurrences of the leader value in the array. Then we will use a for loop to check all the elements of vector b. We are checking if every consecutive couples of elements are different, in which case we keep c equal to one because these are different elements. So each element would have only one occurrence, but if they are equal, meaning the else condition here, we are going to increment the number of occurrences for the number bi. And if the number of occurrences is greater than the size of the uh, vector b uh, divided by two, then in this case, we have found our leader value, l is equal to bi, and we are going to break out of the for loop because we don't wanna lose more computing time checking the other elements. Then as we have already described in our algorithm description, we are going to count the total number of occurrences of this particular element in the uh, vector AI. So for all the elements of A, we are going to check if AI is equal to L, 
in which case we are going to increase the uh, variable n by one. Then we define a new variable, an integer called uh, EQL for equiliters number. So this is where we are going to store the number of equiliters that we have found in the array. And then we reinitialize the counter C to zero. And we are going to loop over all the elements of array A checking if the uh, element ai is equal to l in which case we are going to increment the current counter of leader values and since we are reading the array a from one element to another according to the index i this number here c in each iteration will be holding the uh, number of leader values that we have read so far so in other words, it's the number of leader values on the left side of the array. Then we are going to put our magic conditions that we have explained in the algorithm section. So if i plus 1 is less than twice c, and at the same time, we have the size of a minus i minus 1 is less than twice the number of occurrences of the leader value on the right side of the array, which is given by this difference here, the total number minus the uh, number on the left side of the array. And if this condition is true, meaning we have the same leader on the left and on the right side of the uh, slices of the array, we are going to increment the counter of equal leaders by one. And we are going to do this for all the uh, elements of array A. And when we finish, we are going to return the number of equal leaders as a result. In Python, the solution is very similar to the one we have used in C++. So first, we are going to uh, just find the value of the uh, leader or the dominator of uh, the array A. For this, we have to define a new list B, which is a copy of A. We are going to sort the list B. We are going to use the same variables, C, the counter of occurrences, L, which will hold the value of the leader and n, which is the counter of the total occurrences of this leader value. Then to find the uh, value of the leader or the dominator, we are going to do this in this part here, in this for loop. We are going to loop over all the elements of b, the vector b, checking every couple of uh, neighbors. If they are different, then we reinitialize the counter to 1. So we have one occurrence of this element bi. Otherwise, if these are equal, bi is equal to bi minus one, we are going to increment the counter of occurrences of the element bi by one. And if the counter c is greater than the length of b over two, meaning more than half of the list is equal to the element bi, in this case, the leader of this list or of this array will be equal to bi. And then we can break immediately out of the for loop. We don't have to lose more time counting the other occurrences of the other elements in this case. And the second for loop here is to count the total number of occurrences of the leader value in the vector a, which we will keep in the variable n. Then we use the echo leader variable, a new variable that is initialized at zero, and we reinitialize the variable c also to zero. Then we are going to loop over all the elements of vector a, and if the uh, element ai is equal to the leader value, we are going to increment the counter of occurrences. Remember that this uh, c variable here will represent the number of occurrences of the leader value on the left side of the array and the right side of the occurrences of the leader value on the right side of the array can be obtained by doing the difference n minus c. Then we are going to use the uh, magic condition that we have already explained and used in the C++ solution. If i plus 1 is less than twice the um, number c, it means that we have a leader on the left side of the array and at the same time, we have leader on the right side of the array. So this particular index, i, will be called an equileader. And we can simply increment the counter of equileaders by one, doing so while reading all the elements of the array a. And when we finish our iterations, we can return the number of equileaders by simply returning this variable here. And this is our perfect score. I hope that this content will be of help for you. Stay tuned for more examples and exercises and see you next time.